I want to first read this out, and I'm afraid it's going to be in an English accent. And um, I want to be the equivalent of a punctuation mark repeated several times at the end. Okay, so I'm not fighting against this. I'm super underlining it. For that reason, I'm going to read it out first with my English accent. <laughs> Just to say from the outset, okay, uh, we are all different. And uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says some have this and some have that and some have the other. I think the more we move into the third level, the more facility and authority we have across the board. I am just so encouraged by Jesus, who right at the beginning of his ministry couldn't do toffees. He just his first announcement was just an announcement in his in, in the synagogue. He was baptized in the spirit, he'd opposed Satan, faced Satan down, uh all his attacks in the wilderness, and then he went into the synagogue. And I like the fact that Jesus had to learn the Melchizedek order from scratch. So even as I'm speaking here, I'm kind of aware that Jeff Randall, if I'm discerning him correct, is more of a Matthew type guy, whereas I'm more of a John type guy, or, or Jeff is a uh, Matthew John split, something like that. Um, so I can't even compete with anything that Jeff, I'm sure, moves in. And I don't have to. And Ern Baxter, a whole generation ago, didn't have to compete with a lot of his compatriots. He just had to deliver the word that God was speaking through him. And in my underlining, that's what I want to do. And I don't want to compete, because I can't compete. What's going on around us now? Here's something many have not seen and they need to. If a mighty and pure spirit is unleashed into the spirits of the people of a nation, the nation will change because the internal nature of the people changed when that spirit took over their spirits, their hearts. This spirit has a delivery method by which it uses in order to make this happen. That delivery method is the preaching demonstration of this thing we call the gospel, though it's often not understood, and that must change now. God's genius plan was to fix things in the earth, not by the means of political or social activity, but by the means of a literal spiritual possession of the inhabitants of the earth, each individually. The last two years has revealed the severity of the lack of understanding of this amongst his own people. This is the scariest thing revealed yet, and like no one is even talking about it. Why have so many leaned on the arm of the flesh when we were told right to our faces that our war is not with people but rather with spirits that control the people? Get the people reborn and their political and world views radically change within a very short time afterwards, all without even telling them what changes in thought to make. The Holy Spirit, in a person, leads them into all truth, little by little. Our weapon is literally supernatural paranormal in nature. Let us not look away from the fact that fact, but rather accept it and deal with it. And... That weapon is the preaching, demonstrating of the gospel. This thing is not foolishness. It is the highest level of sophistication imaginable, which is why so few understand it and thus default into thinking it is foolish. Remember this, folks. Burn it in your minds, because if you forget it, then you literally have no way left to make yourself useful in the earth for the kingdom of God. And who wants to live a useless life? Amen? Amen. 
I'm, I'm coming to this slightly differently. Uh, and so how can I come to it differently and underline it? Uh, the third level understanding of the gospel is different from the second level understanding of the gospel. There are in 1 John 2 three stages of Christian growth. There is the beginning stages where we apprehend the fact that Jesus has pray, paid the total price for us. We can't add to it. We can't complete it. We need our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The second stage of growth is having applied the blood of Jesus. We start to need to realise that even to live, even to manifest things, we require a baptism in the Holy Spirit and, like the water gate itself, continually learning flow in the Spirit. And as young men, we have a, now... A, had some experiences of faith and we now apply them as young men to precarious situations that come our way always knowing that we're working out of a victory that has already occurred and cannot be added to because Jesus said on the cross it is finished and that's where we are as a world that's where Reinhard Bonke got to. That is where we are as a world. The second level, the second stage of growth internationally. But there's three stages. And the early Celtic Christians moved in the third stage. A lot of them took authority over whole regions, geographical regions in the United Kingdom. Principalities and powers were coming for them direct and they either faced the thing alone or they were surrounded by the rest of the community but they faced things and gained dominion over these principalities and powers in their regions. And St Patrick even cast off every single snake from Ireland and to this day Ireland remains snake free. These are authoritative positions over regions. The people at Coldy Island could go to any region whatsoever, be it Brittany in France or Normandy or, or uh, the Netherlands, and wherever they went, the presence of God would fall and the whole region would be in revival. These are catalogued, historically recorded things. These people were so powerful in God that if you read Kathy Walters Ministries books, Kathy Walters Ministry.org, you will learn about the things these people did, which are on a level with any of the Old Testament main prophets in power. So there's this place, there's this place that God wants to bring his church to. And it is fitting that at the end of the age, the, la the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former house. And we've got some way to go. So we just have one church like Acts 2 on the earth over one city. Just to return there. But we're going to be greater than that. Because the Holy Spirit in these times is literally with doing the equivalent of machine gunning us with such truth so fast that as we share the truth between us, we will be led into incredible light. Jeff's speech here just text here is still not underlining the horrible horrible genesis 3 reality we have been presented with a fake 
life. Every aspect of flesh life is in fact fake. Because it is not pure spirit. It is derived spirit. It has come with the tainting of Satan. But it is so subtle that we don't see it. We live with it. Until the light goes on in revival, which is like someone explained, I think Ed Miller said, it's like an Argentinian garage, and you turn on the light and you see snakes in your garage or scorpions in your garage. But until that light went on, you were happy. You were just walking around in your dark garage. Until the light gets turned on, the revival light, the throne light, until that light gets turned on, we cannot see any of the fakery, the plastic nature of what Satan has smeared like cling film over our entire lives so that what we think we're dealing with is real life, but it is not God's pure, undiluted life, even love. So you hear lots of people, particularly the Mark type of personality, talking about love. And they come out of the womb being helpers, being loving characters, being personable people. But it's all derived. It is not coming from the agape, ripping of the heart, blood, heart of God. It is not visceral. It is not the same kind of love. Only Jesus Christ in an individual can bring that kind of love that gets to the root spirit of what is wrong in any person's heart. It takes the living Jesus Christ to do that. So the gospel we bring is not a first-level gospel. It is not a second-level victory, magic podium, American gospel. It is a third-level gospel which includes the others as standard, eating them for breakfast in the morning. The first and foremost thing is God is the sole source of all life in the universe. The devil uses his life twists it in on itself and that which was self for others and agape becomes self for self. You scratch my back and I will scratch yours. Except when he scratches our back, we bleed and die and he sucks us dry. What we are preaching is so radical, so radical. We are not self-run, front-of-house souls. We are not brains on sticks. We are spirit. We are spirit beings. And Satan has wound us up like a web for 250 years. So no person on earth believes properly, unless they're in Eastern religion, that they are spirit. Apart from the fourth quartile. The fourth quartile know that instinctively, whether they talk about it a lot or not, whether they can articulate it or not, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John people, the John people, cannot fit into a Matthew, Mark, Luke secular world that makes flesh its foundation, that like Harari uh, and Klaus Schwab, no, it's Noah, Noah Ju, Juval, Noah, Noah Harari and Klaus Schwab make... Flesh, our bottom line. 
But we're not like that. We are living beings. And Satan has created several pl false platforms. Genesis 3 is a completely lying delusion. And if we address each other on the basis of Genesis 3, we are already lost. That's why when Jesus was addressed, good teacher, he went for him in the spirit. You would have thought, what's wrong with that? He's being polite. The tree of good spirit is one of the major spirits left in the earth, untouched. And that's what we address in the spirit. The tree of good is just a plastic front. We are good because God intrinsically is good. If we think of ourselves, we are good. We are already in Satan's spirit. It's the of ourselves bit that is the backstory that's foul. It's not even the being good bit. That which God made us is good. When we move instinctively out of a heart, that is spontaneously what God has made us. It is good. The spirit tag that kills and criminalizes everything is of ourselves. We are sheep of our own pasture. We evolved ourselves. It's all lies. Lies. God made us. We are good because we were knit in our mother's wombs by God. You had nothing whatsoever to do with anything about you. You were knit in your mother's womb. You are good because God is good and everything he does is good. But the of ourselves spirit corrupts everything like some, some weird thing introduced into liquid which permeates the whole liquid and fouls it all up. So in ministering the gospel, we are speaking a spirit that is pure, that is from God, that is from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, by the way, not an it or a power. He is God. He is the second person of God. He comes to bring fellowship and bring the Father and the Son and himself to our being, that they may make their home with us. I stop there.